What do you think is the code of life? Think about it for a second. Is it DNA, human genome? In reality, this is really only about half of the truth. Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Biotech. Today we're going to be talking about epigenetics and gene regulation. If you were asked what makes organisms different, the answer is pretty straightforward. The difference between me and an elephant and a mouse is the DNA, it's, it's the genetic code. That makes sense. The code that those organisms are written by is DNA. But think about this. There are about 23,000 different genes in the human genome. Every single cell in your body has the same genome. So then what's the difference between an eye cell and a skin cell and a muscle cell? Arguably, these different tissues and cell types are more different than some organisms. It turns out the answer is epigenetics or gene regulation. Epi meaning on top of, genetics meaning genetics. Epigenetics is sort of a layer on top of the genetic code that makes cells within an organism different from each other. Primarily, the more well-studied mechanism of epigenetics is DNA methylation. It's commonly described as sort of an on and off switch. If a gene is methylated, then that means the gene is off. If the gene is unmethylated, that means the gene is on. Specifically, the methylation occurs on cytosine molecules, the methyl group just being a carbon and three hydrogen, and DNA having A, C's, T's, and G's, C being cytosine, these are the molecules that are methylated. As a side note, DNA methylation plays an additional role. Imagine you're replicating a single strand of DNA and you make an error when you're replicating that single strand of DNA. How does the cellular machinery know the difference between the old strand and the new strand? Specifically, if you make an error where you put a T instead of an A and you happen to have a T matching with another T, there's clearly an error there but if you're looking at just the DNA sequence, all you'll see is a T matching with a T. You know that's wrong, so which strand is the incorrect strand? The answer, of course, is DNA methylation. The old strand is going to be methylated, and so the cellular machinery will know that that's the old strand. And the new strand has yet to be methylated, so the cellular machinery knows that the new strand has the error, and it will fix that error. Here's another issue with organisms. When you're an embryo, when you're a zygote, a single-celled organism, and you just begin dividing, how do your cells know to differentiate to different tissues, to different parts of your body, to different organs? It turns out that your methylation is completely reset upon conception. So zygotes have almost no methylation at all. And as tissues and cells differentiate from one another, there is more methylation added, so more genes are being turned off. This is essentially what stem cells are. Stem cells have almost no DNA methylation, and so they can differentiate into almost any cell type. If you ever stumble across the term iPSCs, or induced pluripotent stem cells, the way that these were developed was by turning off four genes and effectively resetting methylation of any cell type. So if you take a skin cell from a human and you knock out these four genes, then you can revert that skin cell back into a stem cell and then differentiate that cell into almost any cell of the body. The second mechanism of epigenetics or gene regulation is something called histones. A histone is an octamer, meaning eight subunits, just eight chunks, and DNA is wound around these eight subunits. And if this DNA is wound tightly around this histone, then it's considered heterochromatin or closed and it effectively silences the gene that is being wrapped around the histones. This heterochromatin or closed chromatin is not accessible to your transcriptional machinery in your cell, and so the gene is effectively silenced. However, it's usually not completely silenced. The thing about histones is they're commonly referred to as more of a dimmer switch rather than an on and off switch like DNA methylation is. The way that these dimmer switches are adjusted is by adding different functional groups to the histone subunits. So for example, acetyl groups or methyl groups or various other functional groups can be added to these histone subunits, making the conformation of the histone as a whole more open or more closed. When histones are more in open conformations, it's considered euchromatin, meaning open. 
and it's more accessible by your cellular transcriptional machinery. So it's pretty common knowledge that the difference between organisms is DNA, the genome, the code of life. But it's not commonly talked about that there's this second layer that's almost just as important, the difference between cell types within an organism. Epigenetics and gene regulation is so important, in fact, that there's an entire subfield of biology called developmental biology that seeks to study how tissues and cells differentiate from one another in early development. So anyway, I hope you learned something today about tissue differentiation, epigenetics, and gene regulation, and hopefully you find it as interesting as I do. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.